Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I have the opportunity to work on another one of these uh, Japanese reels from the, um, well, the 1970s period. This one is a Fluger International 627. I haven't done a video on this one yet. Very much looks like a Mitchell reel. Uh, at a quick glance, it's not. It is a, uh, a Fluger reel. We're going to take this reel apart, we're going to service it, we'll show you how to keep it running for, well, generations to come. This one's uh, marked on its uh, reel seat, Dad, probably was Dad's reel at one point, and uh, we're just happy to, to keep these vintage reels flowing. So, uh, we're going to start by removing the exterior pieces and parts. As I do, I want to suggest to you to uh, subscribe to my channel if you like the idea of fishing reels. If you like to see how they're serviced, how they're repaired, how they're kept running, how they're kept fishing. And uh, the subscription is appreciated. We just passed uh, 24,000 subscribers. I thank each and every one of you for that. And I welcome all the new subscribers interested in learning about the art of real repair. One of the things I do when I go to remove the exterior parts is I make sure that the anti-reverse dog is in the off position. That means it's not clicking as you see here. This has a switch to go up. Why do I do that? I do that because the anti-reverse dog has various um, types of configurations in them. Sometimes they're hidden behind the main gear. And if they're uh, behind the main gear, it often happens where if it's engaged, you will pop the anti-reverse dog and spring off. And sometimes if you don't know what the configuration is, well, you're just going to spend a lot of time trying to figure it out. So just as a good practice, I find that if I take it off uh, before I start, we're in good or better position. I also use a parts tray. You can see I put the handle and the three screws I've removed in there. And while I put the three screws in there, I did check to make sure that they're all the same size. One of the things I'm going to recommend that you do is to take pictures along the way. When you take the pictures, you'll find out the orientation of the pieces and parts before you start to take them off and you'll be able to use that as a reference guide when it's time to uh, put the reel back together again. Well this reel has been sitting for a while. All of the grease has migrated down to the cross wine block and it's just kind of stuck there. And so I'm just going to take a, a little bit of that off here so I can see what I've got. What I have is a screw holding that in. Sometimes you're going to find that it's simply a pin. Other times it's a screw. And uh, in this case, it's a screw. And this is a good place to take that picture because from time to time, it is possible to take the part and invert it or turn it upside down when you go to reinstall. So a picture is going to help you. And in this case, I'm noticing that the top of the cross wine block is closer, well, closer than the bottom. You'll see that's only about an eighth of an inch clearance there, a sixteenth of an inch to an eighth of an inch here. So when I go to reinstall, I want to make sure that the short side is facing up. With the pin removed, you can remove the axle shaft and the uh, spool, and you can further remove the spool by pushing in on the button to clear the axle shaft. So much of real service is just about cleaning, in this case we need a lot of cleaning, inspecting the pieces and parts, making sure that they're all complete and uh, working properly. You saw me do a little bit of that inspection before we started to take the reel apart. I wanted to make sure that the, uh, uh, the pieces were working and if there was something that said it wasn't, I wanted to see if I couldn't find the the cause of that problem during the uh, installation. And then of course, replacing any worn parts, replacing the lubrication, and uh, reassembling the reel. Well this time, I, I used a 12 millimeter socket to uh, take that nut off, and I noticed this is a reverse threaded nut. In other words, it turns off by turning that in a clockwise manner. How did I notice that? I went to turn it to the left and all I seemed to be doing was tightening or not moving it. So sometimes it's a clue that try the other way before you go any further and, and uh, possibly ruin the reel. We have a, uh, a tie down here. It's going to hold the 
rotor to that pin and gear. And we should, with that nut removed, be able to just remove the rotor. Underneath here, you're going to notice we, we don't have much going on. I do believe this one pushes through. We'll find out in a moment. Yep. So this one can push through. But i got to do a little bit of cleaning before I do that. Once you've cleaned, you should be able to, there we go, remove the rest of it. Notice on here that we do have a washer that uh, belongs there. we got an awful lot of stuff on here, and I have an awful lot of stuff on my paper towel there, so Chris is probably cringing at the moment. We're going to go ahead and place that paper towel. I'm going to use a little bit of penetrating oil here to loosen up that grease. I'm going to use a hard brush to pull through on that to clean the channels where those teeth are and where the old dirt and grease is. You can see it all coming out on the paper towel now. Okay, once that's cleaned, we can put that into our parts tray. Next up then is to remove the main gear, push through on it from the back side. Pull that out. And just do a good cleaning here. Same thing happened here. The grease kind of stuck around that uh, crosswind block, but also stuck in the back there. And if you didn't remove that main gear, well, that'd be a problem that you uh, could have in terms of sluggish performance or grease uh, clogging uh, the channel and so on. We'll do the same thing here that we did with the other one. We're going to use that brush and you can see again we're just pulling all kinds of old uh, dried grease out of those channels and the teeth. And while you do this, inspect the teeth. Make sure that they're all uniform, that there's none that are bent or appear chipped or broken. You would notice that when you were doing your testing if you had a, a rough winding going on. That would be a potential cause for that. Okay, we'll just set that aside for a moment. And with that uh, gear cleaned and out of the way, let's just go over and make sure we clean the puddled grease around the, the gear side. Again, I'm going to use the penetrating oil as a degreaser. This almost looks like it's a Vaseline of some description. But, uh, Whatever it is, it hasn't been changed in a while. It's all puddled up. And notice that you have a washer on the back here that's going to go on your main gear. Take that off and put that on the main gear now. And just inspect the case. Make sure that it's clean all about. There's a little bit more of the grease on the underside here and a little bit on the side. Okay, with the with that completed now, this uh, we were lucky we wouldn't have knocked this um, anti-reverse dog off. You can see it's got an E-clip on it right there that's holding it. And you can see how that's going to work. When you put it into the on position, you have a, a tang here that's going to intersect with the ratchet on the back of the main gear to stop it. And when it backs off and goes low, it's out of the way, and you can backpedal the reel. All right, let's, uh, let's take a moment to reassemble the case. With the main gear cleared, uh, cleaned, I'm going to put a good amount of grease onto the teeth. You don't have to get it in every tooth. It will spread when it's uh, operating, but uh, it is a good idea to if you haven't had grease on it in a while, get it there and get it on the face here where that cross wind block is going to ride. And of course, get it on the, uh, the drive side where it's going to go through the case. With that done, go ahead and install that. And I like to put the handle back on, especially when I have to put that uh, pinion gear back in. I want to hold that main gear tight to the case so that it is an easier install on the pinion gear. Okay, do the same thing with your pinion gear. Make sure you get a nice amount of grease onto it. Get a grease onto the shaft where it's going to go through. And in order to install this easily, take that washer that was off of there and put the washer behind. Seat that first. That way you don't have to try and work that washer over the top of the main gear. We can bring the main gear in, drive it up, and make sure it seats, and then turn pinion gear so that you know it's seated properly. Once you have the pinion gear in, there's a washer that seats on top. 
and then the rotor goes on. The rotor has a clip in it, I usually don't get it right. Oh, I got it right that time. And then our nut goes on next. Remember, this is a reverse threaded nut. So turn it counterclockwise. And I like to start them by hand so that I don't cross strip them. Tighten what you can by hand. And then use that socket for that last turn or two. Good time to give it a test. It's running nicely. Now let's go install the cross wind feature and the axle shaft. Do the same thing here on your cross wind gear. Make sure to get a nice amount of grease into the back end of it where it's going to ride on the main gear. Remember we noticed that there was a short and a long side and the short side faced up. So find your stud, put your cross wind gear on and face that short side up. Hold that block now. Go get your axle. There's a hole in the axle where that screw is going to go. So face that towards you. Just a very light, light coating of grease through the pinion gear and then align that with the hole in the cross wind block. Bring it in and then find the hole in the axle shaft and align those two so that you can put the screw in. Next up you want to go to your parts tray, get that screw and complete the attachment. Now what may happen, because one side is longer than the other, if you would put the long side up, you may be bumping it and uh, causing it to fail. Alright, tighten that up. Now that looks a whole lot cleaner and nicer than when we took that case off to begin with, right? Give it a test, make sure everything's working nice and smooth, which it is. Fire the bail. And then let's get the side plate and put that back on. Now that, that whole case is metal, but this side plate is plastic. And that kind of is an indication of the timing of these, uh, the production of these reels. So this one, I'm going to guess in the 70s. By the 80s, these would have been the advent of the graphite cases. So this would have been an attempt to reduce some of the weight of the reel, as well as uh, the corrosion resistance. And I'm sure they saved a penny in there somewhere too. Uh, making it that way. All right, here's your third one. Put that in, tighten that up. These are just straight up uh, spools, pretty much like a Mitchell spool. Move your adjuster, you have a little um, drag washer there. You push that through on the bottom, make sure it's all clean. This is your click ratchet for when it goes backwards. Pull that through. If you needed to replace the drag washer, you could pull that out. I would guess right now it's probably pretty hard to find one of these drag washers given the age of the reel. But uh, if you did need to do that, there's a spring clip under there. I'm just going to use a little cotton uh, kitchen scrubby to uh, clean up that spool a little bit and we'll reattach. Well, if you have any questions on this reel or any reel, if you want to leave them in the comment section, I will try to answer those for you. There you go, that's nice and tight. And it uh, doesn't have to be on this reel. Just uh, leave that question. I do try to answer them in the morning. And uh, if I can help you with something, I will try to do that. All right, this is the Fluger International 627. Turn it nice and smooth. If it is Dad's reel, Doug, you got Dad's reel back, ready to go fishing again. I hope you've enjoyed that. To our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for all of these you do to keep us safe. To everyone, please uh, take the time to service your reels, get them ready. I wish you good luck on the water and uh, happy fishing in the days ahead. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.